Hi folks, so for today's video I've got a little bit of news to share in regards to the future of this channel and I'm also going to talk a little bit about some of the um, some of the influencing factors that I take into account when making various decisions in regards to this channel. So I'm going to be talking a little bit about YouTube and the whole you know algorithm and all that kind of stuff but um, just to kick off um, I would just like to give you the TLDR uh, for this video, which is that I'm going to be taking some time away from this channel to effectively step back and give it a bit of a review, give it a bit of a think, and um, and and just have a bit of a you know a uh, a big picture view of of the direction of this channel, where I want it to go, because it's no secret that this channel hasn't been doing too well lately. It hasn't been doing too well for the past uh, year or so. In fact, even maybe even a little bit before that. Um, in fact, truth be told, the number of views that I'm getting now is probably around a quarter of what they were when this channel was at its height. So as you can imagine, that's more than a little bit cause for concern for me. So I'm going to just be taking some time away to uh, to think about uh, how this channel can can be put back on track. Now, um, I'm going to be talking a little bit about where I get some of my information from and what influences my decisions uh, as well, as well as, as why I make videos and who I, I make videos for, because uh, some of this might be a little bit interesting, um, but also it might sort of help you guys um, uh, just in regards to like giving feedback and stuff like that, because I'm always interested in what you guys have to say and um, and a little bit uh, and knowing a little bit about what happens behind the curtains might, uh, might fill you in in that regard as well. So... Um, so anyway, uh, when I make decisions in regarding this channel, uh, I tend to take four sources of information into account, right? So the first is uh, analytic data. So that comes from YouTube analytics. Uh, now this is reasonably straightforward. I take into account um, metrics like watch time, view count, how much money a video earns, viewer retention, average viewer retention, all that kind of stuff. And um, in regards to a lot of uh, that data, it's not too bad. For example, the viewer retention on a lot of my videos is much higher than average, even among non-subscribers. So that's definitely a good indicator because watch time overall is the key metric that the YouTube algorithm takes into account. And that ties into a little bit about why uh, I like to do live streams on this channel as well, because uh, if, for example, I make a 20-minute video that gets watched by 10 people all the way through, that's the equivalent of having one person watch a 200-minute video all the way through. So, um, as you can imagine, things like short-form content uh, are massively penalized by the YouTube algorithm, unbelievably so. So. Uh, if you're ever wondering why you can't um, have these short, quick tutorials on how to do something, um, it's largely because they could very well exist, but YouTube will never show you to uh, show them to you because they just, um, well, they generally don't help YouTube make enough money. Um, and watch time is usually the value that Google and YouTube attribute um, the most in regards to earnings. So, for example, um, when it comes to dividing up the YouTube premium uh, earnings that you get, uh, it is almost directly as a result of watch time. So if you're making a short one minute video on how to do something, well, at best, you're going to get a one minute watch time per person. And that's if everyone watches the video all the way through to the end. So um, it's an unfortunate sort of avenue that YouTube has decided to go down there. And it's hurt uh, creators like animators and musicians a lot. Although, of course, the Vivo channels don't seem to be doing too badly these days, but uh, they make a lot of special deals with YouTube. Um, but all in all, um, when it comes to things like streaming and long form content and, and waffly rants and stuff like that, um, YouTube tends to, re to reward that quite a lot. So, um, and it's no secret that when you go back into my archives, it's some of the longer videos that YouTube keep like uh, keep uh, pushing to, uh, to the forefront there. So there's also a lot of interesting stuff that can be garnered from the data um, in, in that regards as well. Now, the second source that I, I get information from is, of course, viewer feedback. So that's comments from the comment section. I'm going to be, of course, reading the comments of this video to see what you guys have to say about, um, you know, if you guys have sort of any advice or thoughts. Um, and just as a side note on that, uh, when you do leave uh, comments about stuff, you know, in regard to this channel, um, definitely leave 
comments regarding what you want to watch, not necessarily what you think will be best for the channel. I know that a lot of people like to say, oh, well, Chris, why don't you try this? Because YouTube might reward you. Well, I mean, I've got several data from lots of other sources um, that can sort of uh, estimate what YouTube and Google want out of me. But uh, in a lot of cases, uh, what you guys want is uh, is why I'm making the videos. I'm making the videos for you, not for Google and YouTube. Obviously, there's this incredibly tearing balance between us all. And, um, and, and sometimes, you know, I can't make videos for me and I also can't make videos for you. I've got to make videos that sort of fit within the, um, you know, the algorithmic nightmare that every YouTuber seems to find themselves in these days. So, uh, but yeah, viewer f feedback is particularly important. And also you may have noticed that I've actually started running some polls on the community tab of this channel. So uh, this is more apparent to mobile viewers who have the YouTube app. But if you are on desktop or you're watching this through the browser on your mobile, uh, check out from time to time the community tab of this channel. I'll usually post on Mastodon when I have a new poll up, uh, so you shouldn't be too much out of the loop. But the, um, my latest poll, for example, um, is asking about your thoughts on live streaming because it is, um, it, it, it's such an odd metric like there are I know there are a number of you guys that don't really like uh, you know watching me stream games uh, and some of you have even uh, let me know that it's a little bit intrusive uh, in regards to your subscription inboxes and so forth however interesting side note going back to the analytics my highest earning video over the past month is the first video of the Grand Theft Auto 3 series so when I streamed Grand Theft Auto 3 for the first time that actually made me more money in the past month than uh, than any other video which is quite interesting, even though this isn't wholly a gaming channel, um, but because of how YouTube measures up the metrics and all that kind of stuff, it's kind of it's kind of interesting like that. Um, and also, viewer feedback is is great for a little bit, you know, for, for direction in in other areas as well. And and also, it's one of the reasons why I even make the videos in the in the first place. One of the reasons why sometimes I'm hesitant to make videos on other platforms is not because they won't get views or anything like that. It's just because they don't get that much in the way of feedback. And that's where, uh, quite interestingly, uh, BitChute and PeerTube do quite well when it comes to videos. Is that BitChute actually has a surprising amount of viewer feedback, but also the way that PeerTube have integrated into the Fed have actually meant that um, yeah most of my videos actually get a fair amount of, of comment engagement um, not that that affects any kind of algorithm whatsoever but it is just nice to actually put out a video and have people feedback on it um, in a you know in, in a sort of organic and natural way which is pretty cool so um, yeah keep checking the the community tab on the YouTube channel here because I'll be asking a fair amount of questions none of these are going to be taken as an outright you know um, election as it were um, and I'm not going to be taking any of the polls as read because it's also very important to bear in mind that a lot of the the viewer feedback doesn't line up with the analytics so what people say they want and what people actually end up watching are two very very different things and actually another interesting metric about this channel 75% of my views come from non-subscribers so that's also something that I need to also take into account so uh, yeah, it's uh, it's certainly very interesting from that regard, but um, a lot of the time, people who are the first to speak up and speak loudest don't actually necessarily represent a lot of other people. So if I do sometimes go against what is apparently, um, you know, almost unanimous viewer feedback, it might be because the other underlying data might indicate otherwise, which is always uh, quite interesting. So for example, um, uh, my latest poll, which is talking about live streaming, uh, a lot of you guys, uh, for the most part, would rather see the saved live streams, so the live streams once they're streamed out, either on a separate channel or just not on this channel at all, or even maybe over on Twitch. So uh, now that might ha also have, have something to do with the fact of how I phrase the question and the fact that YouTube only gives me five options, which is uh, a little bit limiting in, in that regard. But um, but yeah, so the analytic data and the uh, the monetization data as well, uh, definitely, I'm not going to say contradict, but they don't, you know, like there is a complete picture that I need to take into account all of these. Uh, another um, uh, source of information that I use is community feedback. Now, I originally started this channel um, and I originally decided to put a lot more time behind this channel. Uh, because I wanted to engage and promote parts of the open source 
and free software and Linux communities because uh, it, I always found it very difficult to get involved in computers, largely because I was prohibited, prohibited by a lot of cost, but also uh, let's just say I didn't exactly get on with my school's IT teachers and they they regularly told me that I was just you know not smart enough to to do much with computers as as I, as I grew up and uh, and and it's a little bit more of a story behind that but this isn't a sob story video <laughs> um, but yeah like since since my time at school the free software and open source and Linux communities have actually been very welcoming to me and actually provided me with a lot of tools and a community where I actually managed to sort of get back into computers uh, after I felt incredibly disenfranchised um, and and I, I can't even say how much I owe to the to the free software or Linux open source communities for for actually you know, bringing me back here. It means more to me than I could ever portray through a little YouTube video here. So I wanted to give something back. I wanted to perhaps signal boost some of the the good projects, some of the nicer distributions. But um, but I think nowadays, like it's it seems that maybe like Linux and distro YouTubers are perhaps not on the best of terms with the wider Linux community. And it's not difficult to see why, um, because of... And I know I'm sort of using the algorithm here as a bit of a scapegoat, but it rewards clickbait and drama and getting on bandwagons. And if you're trying to build a YouTube channel without doing that, it's going to be an uphill battle, and the channels that do do that become the most prominent. So... Um, so I think I'm going to make some changes based on that perception and uh, and a lot of the uh, you know conversations I've had with people from the Linux community about this particular subject. Um, this uh, there's also, there's a lot more to it than that as well. But I think as a result of that, I'm probably going to be dialing back the distro reviews. Um, there's a few reasons behind it as well. Um, they don't get the views that they used to, even though they kind of guaranteed to get a decent number of views. Um, but in in many ways, it's 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 very difficult because I don't think the work that I put into them necessarily shows on the uh, on the end result of the video. Uh, when I put together a say a distro review and I'm using like a virtual machine, for example. Um, I think a lot of people watch those and think that I just spun up the distro in a virtual machine that morning and decided to blather over it. Um, and I think, uh, well, and, and I know a lot more time and, and research goes into it than that, but I d it doesn't show. And also, I think in a, in a more wider capacity, is that the differences between the various Linux distros now is actually closing. It's, it's very small. And I think the governing deciding factor on which Linux distribution you should choose should basically be on how much maintenance you want to do versus how up to date your packages want to be. So pick like an Ubuntu LTS if you want a low maintenance system, but you don't mind having packages that are a little bit, you know, older, but, but, but tested, or if you want something a bit, fa you know, more, you know, cutting edge, then just try something like Manjaro or something Arch based really. Um, and then there's this Fedora as well, which is pretty up to date, but it, it has very, um, but it, it has the six monthly release cycle. So I, I, you know, that's kind of like half and half in a way, because the update process for Fedora, I've noticed is actually quite smooth. Um, and if you think of Fedora as a rolling distribution that just gets updated in six monthly stages, then you know you've got a happy medium between a rolling and a and an Ubuntu LTS. I suppose you could apply the same thing to um, Ubuntu six monthly release cycles. But a number of you guys have said that the Ubuntu upgrade process is you know is a bit touch and go, and you guys mostly would rather you can pay. For, I don't know. Maybe that's one for a, for a uh, a poll in terms of how you how you like to upgrade. But um, in terms of the, the 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 community feedback, I think. Um, I mean, this is one of the reasons why I'm going to take ba take a step back and look because I don't think I'm helping the community that I'm trying to anymore. Um, I think that uh, that in fact I think in some cases I might even be having the opposite effect there. Now I'm not. That's not a foregone conclusion. Um, but 
uh, I think that maybe there are other things that I could do, other thing, topics I could make videos about that might be more helpful. Maybe I could do more in the way of app picks or tutorials, but I suppose when it comes to things like tutorials, going back to the uh, talking about the data, um, if I were to do like short one minute tutorials, that would be the death of this channel. So I've got to work out something that's both helpful to the community, something that you guys want to watch, and something that doesn't kill the channel through the algorithm. Um, and the fourth um, source of information that I take is professional feedback. Now, not many of you guys are going to know this, but uh, recently my multi-channel network have brought on a consultant to help me make the most of this channel, try and turn it around a little bit. And some of the advice they offer is actually really quite helpful. Some of it is uh, what you might expect in regards to branding, thumbnails, etc. But a lot of it is that you know these guys know the kind. The, these guys have worked with channels much, much, much bigger than mine. You know, channels with millions of subscribers, and they know what works and what doesn't, and they know how to you know turn channels around and things like that. So some of the advice they give sometimes runs contrary to what you guys might expect. Um, and it's also it was quite interesting. I also actually take the occasional bit of feedback from uh, YouTube representatives as well. Once a channel hits 5,000 subscribers and you happen to know, you know, the ins and outs of things like the YouTube Academy, you can actually get a YouTube representative, a direct contact to YouTube. Um, however, they tend to just give you advice that benefits YouTube more. So with some of the professional stuff from the network, they take into account things like, well, there's streaming, there's Patreon, there is merch, but... Um, as some of you guys know, there are specific reasons why I've decided not to go down the merch route, quite frankly, because I'm not a t-shirt salesman. There's enough YouTubers peddling crap that you don't need, and half of it's plastic, and you know what plastic's doing to the environment. Watch the Blue Planet 2 series, it's, you know, it's pretty eye-opening in, in that regard, but, um, but yeah, it's, uh, so there's a lot to think about, and I'm going to just take some time off because I haven't had much time off this year and I think it's uh, possibly had an effect on my my wider perspective as well um, but yeah I mean I do have to of course take into account monetization because although this channel isn't my sole income I mean there was a time when it looked like that was certainly a possibility but these days uh, it's just making up a corner of it now so you know maybe this is time where I think well do I do I throw myself into some to to my professional non YouTube work at, the, at this stage, or um, or is there still you know is it, is there still something worthwhile to do here? I mean, if I decide to uh, to 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 go down that route, um, you know, like PeerTube is, is wonderful. Why not put more focus on that? I'm not going to get the same number of views, but I get engagement there, and it's a platform that I believe in. And uh, you know, as a side note, um, I know that a lot of from time to time there comes this alleged YouTube killer, uh, a competitive video platform that people think uh, could possibly be a rival to YouTube. But the trouble is, is YouTube is, is a problem because it's monolithic. It's one company that have a monopoly. So if you replace that monopoly with another company, you're most likely going to go down the same route. And, and um, truth be told, out of the, the, the major data collection companies YouTube is uh, and Google are probably one of the better ones so um, that's just that's just my sort of take on the situation and when it comes to something like PeerTube because it's a distributed network because there is no single point of failure because there is no one company dominating the entire platform um, it might actually stand a chance because it's effectively self-hosting but you're just finding a way to to interconnect all of those self-hosting websites into something that effectively manifests itself as a YouTube competitor. But, you know, it's when we pool together our resources to overtake a company like YouTube is when it shows any sign of sustainable promise because, you know, we're just replacing one, you know, one titan with another and I don't think that's in any way sustainable or too much of an improvement, quite frankly. That's just my thoughts on it. But, um, but yeah... So I think I've covered everything that I want to talk a little bit about here, but all in all, I'm probably uh, going to be making some changes to the channel. I'm, it's not going to be doing a complete U-turn. I'm not going to start doing makeup tutorials or reaction videos or anything like that. It's still going to be very much focused on, uh, you know, in tech, open source, free software. You know, I haven't suddenly become a Windows convert. In fact, I don't know if I picked up Windows tomorrow. I don't even know if I'd, I'd, I'd use it. In fact, to be honest, in a lot of cases, occasionally people will ask me to help uh, with a problem on their Mac computers. 
and you want to see me fail about like like a Mac a Mac is a great example uh, or sometimes you know when I use a Mac it reminds me of how a new user might feel or how an inexperienced computer user might feel uh, because it's just that feeling of, of counterintuitiveness I do not find the Mac computer in any way intuitive I have to work myself through the process in an almost similar fashion to how you might see someone who's completely new to computers doing it. I feel like a tortoise that's fallen on its back and can't get up. It's, 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 it's a refreshing perspective shift, I've got to say. Windows, I still feel, because I grew up on Windows, it's, there's still this level of intuition and logic behind it that I can comprehend. Mac, whew, no way. So I think I've covered most of the points, and I just wanted to show you a little bit of, of how I make decisions behind the curtain. But um, I'd love to hear any of your thoughts on, on what you'd like to see from the channel. But bear in mind, I'd like to hear what you think, not necessarily what you think is best for the channel. Because like I say, I've got all kinds of data sources and, um, and I try and uh, take them into account. So, um, so this is your moment to, to be selfish. Feel free to be selfish down in the comment section below. I'd be particularly interested to hear what you think about gaming videos and live streams. Because the thing is, I could put gaming stuff and live streaming stuff onto a separate channel but here's the here's the kicker with that uh, channels uh, aren't really monetized uh, new, new channels aren't really monetized and if a channel's not monetized or if a video is not monetized YouTube don't uh, put them very high in the search rankings at all which is a big problem and it's something that stops small channels getting off the ground a lot and uh, you may have noticed even Blender have had issues when they've decidedly not monetized their videos and YouTube have kicked up a fuss about that now Although it's not too easy to get monetized through uh, Google's, I think it's called AdSense program, um, the trouble is YouTube then start calling all of the shots. And I know quite a lot of people who have just had their AdSense accounts shut down on a whim, sometimes presumably by a mistake on Google's end. And that channel has then been demonetized as a result and they can never join a network. That channel's dead in the water at that point. Um, so I tend to prefer to monetize channels through multi-channel networks because you have a human contact through YouTube and there have been times when I've had um, creator strikes like content strikes I think it's community strikes or something like that you know one of the one of the nasty strikes that you can get which was completely a mistake it was a completely false positive and I managed to raise it with my network and my network then managed to raise it with YouTube and they actually managed to work out that it, yes it was a false positive um, I wouldn't have had that kind of recourse, or I certainly wouldn't have, have had such a speedy resolution of that if I didn't have a human point of contact to go to. So multi-channel networks, they often get a bad rep for taking a rather large amount of your, your revenue, but they do offer a layer of security and a layer of help that is, in my opinion, worthwhile. But that's just my thoughts about it, and I think the politics of, of uh, multi-channel networks can perhaps wait for another video. I did actually think that I could, uh, of, of maybe a different line of videos is talking about the YouTube algorithm and putting, you know, running some tests on it and seeing uh, what kind of videos do well and what kind don't, and uh, trying to get to the uh, the bottom of this kind of thing in a um, in the, you know in, in a more empirical way, which I think could be quite interesting. Um, but like I say, if you have any thought of tech thoughts or um, things like that, app picks is, is one that I'd like to go down as well. But uh, yeah, so I'm going to be throwing a lot of ideas around in the uh, in the next couple of weeks. So check out, you know, I'll be on Mastodon, I'll probably be on Twitch, and I'll be doing the occasional uh, stream as well. Um, so yeah, check the links in the description for all of that kind of stuff, and uh, check the community tab from time to time or Mastodon for, uh, for some polls because I'll just be bouncing some ideas around and I'd like to see if what you guys think of it. So, I think that's about it from me today. Um, thank you very much for hearing me out and um, and I hopefully should see you guys uh, shortly, but uh, thanks very much for watching. That's about it from me today and until next time, I've been Chris Ware and you've been wonderfully awesome. Take care now. <laughs>